Morning, Kay. Well, you can see the picket line is in place uh, outside Bristol Temple Mead Station already this morning. Uh, the figure of the number of trains running here reflects that national image. 80% of uh, services cancelled here at Temple Mead. This is, of course, the major junction for trains in the southwest, uh, you change here to go west to Wales, north up to Birmingham, south down uh, to Devon, and of course to London. There are a limited number of services running here uh, five services, some to London, some to Cardiff, some to Taunton and Plymouth in Devon, uh, and Westbury in Wiltshire. Uh, but the figures that we've just been handed in the last couple of minutes show that footfall uh, on Tuesday's strike was. Uh, down by 70%. So a real impact clearly here at the station as many people are having to work from home. There's no rail replacement as such, so people are having to make alternative arrangements. Glastonbury started yesterday, as we all saw. Many people struggling to get down to the festival there. There may be a few latecomers trying to get their way down to the festival here. But as I say, the furthest south you can get from Bristol today is Plymouth in Devon, right on the Cornish border. There are absolutely no trains at all. Uh, running in Cornwall throughout these strike days. That whole county completely uh, cut off, people having to make alternative arrangements. Uh, we are expecting a few people to start rocking up for those early services uh, running here at Bristol Temple Meads, but you can see the workers behind me here getting plenty of uh, honks and support from drivers uh, going past here as uh, the second day of strikes gets underway. Hi, um, thank you. Uh, Fraser, uh, morning to you as well. Situation there? Morning, Kay. Well, no picket lines here at Chester Railway Station, but no passengers either. Dan there mentioning a 20% service that's uh, operating from Bristol, and the 20% figure that we keep hearing about uh, at the level of, uh, of trains available is countrywide. It's not in places like Chester. Smaller places like this that rely on more local services rather than on the mainline networks uh, are closed altogether, and that's been a real problem uh, for, many of the, uh, for many of the traders here. We'll be talking later on this morning to one uh, store owner who's saying that it's created a massive drop in business and they are bracing themselves for Saturday, normally their busiest day, and the day of the third planned uh, strike action. So uh, it's unlikely that uh, the talks are going to wrap up quickly enough in order to, to prevent uh, any strike action on, uh, on Saturday. We were hearing um, yesterday that uh, if, if an agreement had been made yesterday during the talks that that was going to be too late to prevent strike action today because timetables and uh, so on were already uh, in place and that looks as though it's going to be the the case for Saturday as well and I think a lot of places that rely on rail services that are now effectively cut off during these days of rail strikes will be looking pretty nervously towards the summer and in, in the hope that uh, this situation can be resolved before further strikes are called uh, for later on in the summer. People have been able to find alternatives. I know the Department for Transport was saying yesterday that the strike hadn't had the impacts that maybe the unions had been hoping for but uh, an impact in terms of people finding alternatives is still an impact. There are still tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who've had to change their plans during these uh, during the strike days and during the other days this week when there's been disruptions which have been caused by the knock-on effects of the strike days. So saying that there's no impact uh, whatsoever or reduced impact, I think, is, uh, is perhaps not necessarily the case. People have been trying to find alternatives. We have got used to working from home and lots of people have been doing that. I know Dan there mentioned that uh, some of the figures in terms of football in, footfall in places like Bristol are down, but there have been reports, uh, that some of the data suggesting that footfall in smaller market towns and so on has actually gone up as a result of people working from home and going into the local town centre to buy their uh, cups of coffee or to have lunch or whatever. So footfall in some instances has increased slightly, only slightly, in a, only in, in small market towns as a result uh, of the strike action. But I think what's interesting is throughout the, uh, throughout the whole uh, timeline of this uh, event, from the initial vote that had taken place by uh, the RMT members uh, to, to go for strike action, and then the announcement of the dates of the strike action uh, and now that the strikes have actually started, the commuters and passengers that I've been speaking to still broadly support the strike action, saying that uh, if that's what they need to do in order to get a reasonable, uh, reasonable wage, then that's what they need to do. OK, gentlemen, thanks for the update. Much appreciated.